Does it make sense that if you'd lived a thousand lifetimes, you might have accumulated a lot, a lot of baggage in those lifetimes, uh, a lot of negative karmas, a lot of unresolved wounding, a lot of unresolved pain or hurt. And, and if you were to have been born into this lifetime and remembered all of that from birth, does it make sense it would likely have been confusing, overwhelming, uh, difficult to understand or organize all of that, those different life experiences and those different places? And, and, and how would you hold down a job or how would you have relationships? How would you be part of a family in this lifetime if you were required from very early on in life to, to manage all of the reactions to those other realities, if you will, those other lifetimes that might be terrifically different than this one? And, and how would you be in relationship with other people who did not have all access to all of the, that multi-life experiential database that you had access to. So how alone in the world might you feel? So, so is there a, a wisdom to, to not remembering, I mean, perhaps remembering some past life experiences and not remembering many? If, Anything, any choice you've made in the past, if you have either an attachment or an aversion or both in regard to it, it will be challenging to let it go and to change. If you, if you say, well, I, I wouldn't be integrous if I didn't hold on to this belief or if I changed this belief, or I wouldn't, if I changed my choice from the past, then I might risk something, losing something, being hurt by someone, if I if I if I made a decision in my system that says I can't trust relationships no matter what, and nobody loves me, and I'm not worth a relationship for anybody to have with me, if if someone arrived at such a belief or a, a recording of a bookmark in their life journal, and they and they had a lot of emotional charge on that belief or that recording or that simulacra, then would they be required to let go of that emotional charge, the associated attachment and or aversion or, or both in order to let go of that positionality of recorded interpretation or choice and, uh, and with it, it's downline domino effects. The Buddha Gandhi, uh, Christ, etc. In the moments of their lifetimes, they set intentions, they had qualities of consciousness that they intentionally held. And those intentions, good intentions for humanity, service intentions, love intentions, healing intentions, raising humanity higher into a higher consciousness, unconditional love, compassion, and, and service in resonance with spirit, if, if indeed spirit was part of their uh, philosophy or belief system or experience, spiritual experience. And that said, does it make sense that those energies go into the present? Now, the question is, are they, uh, and they're accessible to anybody, are they in a way, even if time is an illusion, are these, these high beings and souls projecting this energy out, radiating it out across lifetimes, across history, into the future in order to help us in a way? Now, those are very positive, loving, kind, caring intentions that they arrived at and they are generating in our world across time, across thousands of years. Does it make sense that any of us could hold an intention in a prior lifetime or any, an intense negative emotion and that that too would echo from that lifetime into this one? So is it a, is it a dynamic of the vehicle holding it or is it a segment of a row of a thousand lifetimes, and that in that segment, 
this energy is radiating out from the choices or the interpretations or the experiences of that moment in that lifetime, and it's continuing to echo through into the present moment. And then we're the recipients of the energies of our own prior emotional choices. If you say, I was angry and hateful and vengeful in a prior lifetime, and I wanted to kill other people and or myself, and I don't want to let go of that power because I feel I fear letting go of that power to kill other people or myself because I fear that I would be too vulnerable in this present lifetime because I have to have this power. I learned I have this power to, to destroy in this prior lifetime. And I don't want to let go of that because then I'd be less safe in this present lifetime than if I uh, le left the, the choice unchanged. Did, are we are we making sense with this this challenging dynamic of trying to help people in the present lifetime live from peace, kindness, care, love, and uh, surrendered uh, resonance and alignment with spirit, and they have these predispositions literally from prior lifetimes that are not aligned with such a choice, and they and they don't really they don't want to delve back into that because it's either too scary, too painful. Or they fear they fear that we would be asking them to throw away their their supposed safety producing life raft on the challenge currently challenging ocean of life. So you you see that that it that there must be enough acquired understanding in this lifetime for a person in this lifetime to say, well, you know, I understand enough now that I feel okay enough, I'm gonna brave the, the slings and arrows and fears and stress to, to allow myself to be taken into that prior lifetime emotion, meet up with who I was, love unconditionally who I was, no matter how seemingly wrong or destructive or bad or, or not good enough or not in keeping with today's standards of tribal civilization and civility, and process that emotion out, learn my way through and out of it, and just let it go. And by doing so, unmake the choice that has trapped me in the present lifetime. Does it make sense that the soul learns in ways that are transcendent of any particular lifetime personality? So it's an eternal construct, energy construct, we label a soul, it is beyond form, of course. It's a spark of God. It's a it's a dimension and expression in, of God, literally. So it's not limited by time and space and physicality like our lives are. And and so this it's not that the soul makes the choice. There's a a, a user interface between the soul and this life with all of these other people we call a personality. So you have a user interface on your computer, whether it's Windows or Android or uh, Apple. And that user interface allows you to communicate with other people, like on this Zoom call. And the personality is the, the operating system and user interface that you have designed to communicate with other people and interoperate with them in this world. So it's code that you wrote or was conditioned into you by family karma or tribal karma, or that is uh, you wrote uh, 10 lifetimes or 100 lifetimes ago that hasn't been updated yet. You are living as a result of the echoes of many of the emotions and thoughts and beliefs and choices from prior lifetimes. And you can choose differently. And the paradox of it is that if you do choose differently, you'll be in a tug of war with your prior life self. Because we're in these conversations now for years about karma and healing karma and working with the lords of karma and, 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 and use, utilizing and applying healing methodologies, you folks have an edge over it competitively. Uh, it's not competition, just uh, decisional influence more decisional influence over your past lifetimes than they do over your current lifetime. 
there's the flip side of that coin, which is you, most people don't get to know who they have been in prior lifetimes. So they can't see these echoes like lapping waves on the shore of your current lifetime day after day after day. You can't see where they're coming from. You might get messages in a bottle once in a while and you read the message and it says, oh, I was a mean person in a prior lifetime or I must have been, I was a hateful person or I, uh, I stole or I hurt people or something like that. And that really doesn't give you enough navigational information to get from your current lifetime experience to the prior lifetime experience in order to reconcile with your prior life self. So that's the edge your prior life self has. It's, it doesn't care about you. It doesn't even know who you are, who, who, you, who you are as a result of its choices. How, how could it? Because it was living another life in another place, in an, another set of relationships, in another culture, in another time. So it, it doesn't feel bad about what its choices are doing to you in this lifetime. And we're not suggesting it should. It doesn't know any better because it was who you were long ago. So you've evolved and you're still hearing the unresolved echoes from the prior lifetimes. If you can arrive at a capacity to hold unconditional love in your heart and soul consciously and consistently in this lifetime towards anybody, you can even do that toward your prior life selves. If you can hold unconditional love for all of your prior life selves, then and without attachment and without aversion, does it make sense that you can collapse them all into now and process them? If someone goes into rational thinking or logic and, and from prior lifetimes, they basically said, I can't trust all this intuition stuff, or I can't trust all this emotional stuff, or I can't trust all this spiritual stuff. The only thing I can trust is logic. So if one had such a predilection that they arrived at a trap, a, a limited perspective that is experienced as a trap, as all negative emotion is, by the way. Does it make sense that negative emotion is just negative emotion? It's not a trap, and it is experienced as if it were a trap or as if it were a, a torturous, painful experience and process without seeming rational reason. So if we approach such a dynamic from a vantage point of logic, it doesn't seem to be logical, and therefore it remains a riddle that we can't solve with logic. We can solve the riddle, it can't be solved with just logic or just intellect. The combination of emotion, mental process, meditation, relational understandings, soul process, and process of spirit all together can solve in, in, in love and forgiveness can solve anything. If we don't put all those ingredients together all at the same time, then we have unreconciled, unresolved dynamics that seem unsolvable. So the combination of all of these capacities, a good mind, of course, in there too, good mental process, including some ingredient, some slight sprinkle of logic uh, or rational thinking, or groundedness and practicality, all of that is required along with forgiveness of self and other to solve all of, the, all of the karmic riddles. You can forgive yourself into inner peace. You can forgive your past into inner peace. You can release all attachment and aversion through forgiveness of all your prior choices or interpretations, or thoughts or feelings, and, and thus dissolve the karma if you want.